वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट एंड जय स्वामी नारायण टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर नंबर फोर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एटम सो डियर स्टूडेंट लेट अस स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द एक्सरसाइज कंपेयर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन प्रोटॉन एंड न्यूट्रॉन डियर स्टूडेंट वी नो दैट द इलेक्ट्रॉन प्रोटॉन एंड न्यूट्रॉन्स आर द फंडामेंटल पार्टिकल्स ऑफ द एटम इलेक्ट्रॉन प्रोटॉन एंड न्यूट्रॉन्स आर अ सब एटॉमिक पार्टिकल्स फंडामेंटल पार्टिकल्स ऑफ द एटम वी नो दैट द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर द नेगेटिवली चार्ज प्रोटॉन्स आर द पॉजिटिवली चार्ज एंड द न्यूट्रॉन्स आर न्यूट्रल दैट मीन्स द चार्ज लेस पार्टिकल्स सो दीज आर द नेचर ऑफ द चार्ज सो फर्स्ट द पार्टिकल्स आर कंपेयर विद द nature of the charge the electrons are the negatively charged protons are positively charged and neutrons are the chargeless or we can say that the neutrons are the neutral right second one is the mass mass of the electrons are 9 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg mass of the proton and the mass of the neutron are approximately same right and the mass of the proton is 1.672 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg. That is the 200 times the mass of the electron. So, dear student, here the proton is a 200 times heavier than the electron, right? So, mass of the electron is a 9 into 10 raised to minus 31. Mass of the proton is a 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg. and mass of the neutron is approximately same as the mass of the proton now what are the location of the electron proton and neutron we know that the electrons are distributed in the different orbit around the nucleus right and the proton and neutrons are lies together in the nucleus so protons and neutrons are together in the nucleus where the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in a different different cell or in a different orbit right so understand the comparison electrons are the negatively charged particles protons are positively charged and the neutrons are charged less the mass of the electron is a 9 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg mass of the proton is a 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg so mass of the proton is approximately 2000 times that of the mass of the electron and mass of the neutron are same as the mass of the proton the electrons are distributed in the different orbits around the nucleus and the proton and neutron are in the nucleus right second question what are the limitations of the jj thomson model of an atom dear student we were discuss the jj thomson's model according to the jj thomson model of an atom the all the positive charge are distributed O continuously over a sphere, right? Like a pump, uh, like a pudding, right? So, and the electrons are distributed discreetly in the sphere, like a pump, right? So, J. J. Thomson's model of a water model, right? A seeds of the electron. So, what are the limitation of the J. J. Thomson model? J. J. Thomson's model, according to the static electros electricity the continuous distribution of the charge is not possible so first limitation of the jj thomson model is that the according to the static electricity continuous distribution of the charge continuous distribution of the positive charge over a sphere is not possible right jj thomson model could not explain the result of the scattering experiment performed by the rutherford right jj thomson model according to the jj thomson model the positive charge is continuously distributed over a sphere so according to this jj thomson model it cannot explain the scattering of the alpha particles from the golden foil right so it did not have any experimental support right so according to the jj thomson model the alpha particles scattering of the alpha particles cannot be explained right so it will fail to jj thomson model of an atom is fail to explain the different scattering of the scattering of the alpha particle right 
next one is the what are the limitation of the rutherford's model of an atom dear student we know that the rutherford's model of an atom according to the rutherford's model of an atom all the positive charge and the mass is concentrated at the very small region that is called the nucleus and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus right so jj rutherford's model of an atom are failed to explain the distribution of the electron in a different orbit right it failed to explain the stability of the atom the rutherford's model of an atom does not explain the spectrum of the hydrogen and other atoms right so the distribution of the electrons in the different different orbit cannot explain with the help of the rutherford's model right so understand or not next question is a question number 4 describe the bohr's model of an atom so bohr's model of an atom we were discussed previously in the video right so the previous video of the bohr's model of an atom to understand more detail about a bohr's model of an atom so here according to the bohr's model the atom consists of the small positively charged nucleus at its center right the whole the mass of an atom is concentrated at the nucleus and the whole the volume of the nucleus is much smaller than the volume of the atom all the protons and the neutrons of an atom are contained in the nucleus so nucleus contains the positively charged proton and the neutrons right so proton and neutrons are combinedly known as the nucleons and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in a discrete orbit right so according to the bohr's model all the positive charge and the mass is concentrated at the very small nucleus right and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in a discrete orbit while the electrons are revolving in a discrete orbit it do not radiates the energy and that's why these orbits are called the stationary orbit right the bohr space the represent the orbits by the k l m n cell right or we can say that the first orbit second orbit third orbit and fourth orbit right so according to the bohr's model of the atom right very small region very small volume at the center of the atom positive charge and the mass of the atom is concentrated and the electrons are revolving in a circular orbit in a different cell like a k cell l cell m cell n cell or we can say that the first orbit second orbit third orbit fourth orbit right so for the more detail of the bohr's model of an atom see the previous video how the electrons are distributed in the different orbit that also explained by the bohr's model of an atom now dear student question number 5 compare all the proposed models of an atom given in this chapter so in this chapter dear student we will we will discuss the three models of an atom first model jj thomson's model second model is a rutherford's model of an atom and third model is a bohr's model of an atom so first one is the jj thomson's model of an atom according to the jj thomson of model of an atom an atom consists of a positively charged sphere and the electrons are embedded in it like a palm pudding model jj thomson's model of an atom is a palm pudding model or model or we can say that the water melon model right so an atom consists of the positively charged sphere and the electrons are discretely embedded in it but according to the jj thomson model we can say that the negative and positive charge are equal in a magnitude the negative charge and the positive charge are same in the atom so we, as a result of this the atom is a electrically neutral so that is the success of the jj thomson model so according to the jj thomson model we can say that the atom is electrically neutral the positive charge and the negative charge same amount of the positive charge and the negative charge are there in the atom right 
second one is the rutherford model so according to the rutherford model an atom consists of a positively charged center in the atom that is called the nucleus the mass of the atom and the, all the positive charge is concentrated mainly in the nucleus right and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus the size of the nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom here the size of the nucleus is about a 10 raised to minus 14 meter and the size of the atom is about a 10 raised to minus 10 meter so here we cannot know remember the we should not remember the value right the size of the nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom right and third model is a bohr's model bohr agree with the almost point almost all the points as said by the rutherford except regarding the revolution of the electrons for which he added that they are only certain orbits known as the discrete orbit or we can say that the stationary orbit inside the atoms in which the electrons are revolving around the nucleus right so bohr's model bohr's are agree with the model of the rutherford model of an atom explained by the rutherford but except that the rutherford's model cannot explain the distribution of the electron in the different orbits right so bohr giving the idea of the revolution of the electron in a different orbit around the nucleus and these orbits are called the discrete orbits or the stationary orbits and bohr state that while the electrons are revolving in a discrete orbit in a stationary orbit it do not radiates the energy right so now question number 7 6 summarize the rules for writing the distribution of the electron in a various shell for the first 18 elements right so how the electrons are distributed in a different orbit the rules for distribution of the electron in a different cell for the first 18 elements right that also we were discussed in the previous video so dear student to understand the more about how the electron are distributed in the different cells for the first 18 element see the previous video video number four of this chapter right so the rules for writing the distribution of the electron in the various cells for the first 18 elements are as follows first rule right if n gives the number of orbit or the energy level then 2n square gives the maximum number of the electrons possible in a given orbit or a energy level so the maximum possible electrons are in a given orbit it is equal to 2 n square where n is the number of orbit for example if we consider the first orbit or the k cell we put a n equal to 1 so 2 into 1 square that is the 2 electron so in the first orbit or a k cell we'll have a 2 electron for the second orbit put n equal to 2 2 into 2 square that is the 8 right so in the second orbit or L cell will have a maximum of the 8 electron. Similarly, third orbit or M cell we take n equal to 3, 2 into 3 square that is the 18. So third orbit or M cell will have a 18 electron, right? So understand first rule for the electron distribution in the first orbit 2 electron, in the second orbit 8 electron, in the third orbit 18 electrons are there so if it is the outermost orbit then it should have not more than 8 electrons so maximum electrons in the outermost orbit is equal to the 8 electron so there should not have a more than 8 electron in the outermost orbit outermost orbit contains only 8 electron third rule is that there should be a stepwise filling of the electrons in the different orbits. That means the electrons are not accomplished in a given orbit if the earlier orbits or the cell are incompletely filled. So here the filling of the electrons in the different orbits are a stepwise, right? So first, first orbit is completely filled by the electron, then second orbit is completely filled by the electron, then third orbit is completely filled by the electron like this. So 
Electrons are not accepted in the higher orbit if the inner orbit is incompletely filled, right? So understand here so all the three rules of filling distribution of the electron in the various cells. Now question number seven. Define valency by taking the example of silicon and oxygen, right? So dear student, here what do you mean by the valency? The valency of an element is the combining capacity of that element, right? So valency of the element is determined by the number of valence electron present in the atom of that element, right? So here, if the number of electrons in the outermost orbit, that is called the valence electron. If the number of electron in the outermost orbit is a 4 or less than 4, the valency of the element is the number of electron in the outermost orbit. But if the number of electron in the outermost orbit is greater than 4, the valency of the element can be determined by subtracting the number of electron from the 8, right? So here the valency of the element is the combining capacity of that element. Valency of the element is the electron number of electrons required to gain or to loss or to become a octet configuration, right? So here, for example, we require we need to understand the valency of the silicon and the valency of the oxygen. So to find the valency of the silicon, first we require the number of electrons in the silicon atom. So number of electrons we get the atomic number. Here the atomic number of the silicon is a 14, right? So we know that the atomic number of the silicon is a 14, right? So it has a electronics configuration. In the first orbit, 2 electron. In the second orbit, 8 electron. And in the third orbit, 4 electron is there. So here the in the outermost orbit of the silicon atom, there are four electrons, right? So if the number of electrons in the outermost orbit is a four or less than four, the valency of the element is equal to the number of electrons in the outermost orbit, right? So here the valency of the silicon is a four. As these electrons can be shared with the other four atoms to complete the octet, right? So silicon atom requires gain the four electron to become a to complete the octet, or it requires the it gain the four electron to complete the octet. So the valency of the silicon is a four, right? Now second one is the oxygen, right? Oxygen has an atomic number eight, right? So it has a electronics configuration, electronics configuration in the first orbit two electron and in the second orbit six electron is there, right? So oxygen has the atomic number eight. So in the first orbit of the oxygen atom two electrons, right? And in the second orbit of the oxygen atom six electrons, right? So here the six electrons in the outermost orbit of the oxygen, which is greater than four. So the valency of the oxygen is equal to 8 minus 6, we get a 2, right? So the valency of the oxygen is a 2. As the oxygen atom will gain the 2 electrons to complete its uh, octet, right? So oxygen atom has a nature to gain the 2 electrons from the other atom to complete its uh, octet. So its uh, valency is a 2, right? So understand, dear student, what do you mean by the valency? and how we can calculate the valency of the different atom, right? In the previous video, right, we were calculated the valency of the all the eight, first 18 elements, right? So dear students, see the previous video for the, how we can calculate the valency of the other first 18 elements, right? Now, next question, explain with the example, first atomic number, second mass number, three isotopes and four isobar. Give any two use of the isotope. So first one is the atomic number. What do you mean by the atomic number? The atomic number of an element is the 
total number of protons present in the atom of that element right the atomic number of the element is the total number of the proton present in the uh, atom of that element for example atomic number of the nitrogen is 7 that means the nitrogen has a seven proton in its uh, atom right atomic number of the silicon is a 14 that means silicon atom has a 14 proton in its uh, atom so the atomic number of an element is the total number of the proton present in the element right understand atomic number of the helium is a 2 that means it has a two proton in its uh, atom atomic number of the oxygen is 8 that means it has a oxygen has a eight proton in its uh, atom right and the number of proton is equal to number of electron because the atom is a electrically neutral so the atomic number give us the number of protons and the number of electrons second one is the mass number so what do you mean by the mass number the mass number of an element is the sum of the number of protons and the neutrons present in the atom of that element right the mass number gives the total number sum of the number of protons and the number of neutron present in the atom of that element for example carbon carbon has a six proton and the six neutron so the mass number of the carbon is a six plus six we get a 12 right so atom of the boron has a five proton and six neutron so the mass number of the boron is a 5 plus 6 it is equal to 11 right understand so you can say that from the mass number we can get a total number of the protons and the total number of the protons and neutrons right from the atomic number we can we get the total number of protons and from the mass number we get the number of proton plus neutron right third one is the isotopes what do you mean by the isotopes isotopes are the atoms of the same element having the same atomic number but the different mass number so isotopes are the atoms of the same element having the same atomic number but the different mass number for example chlorine has a two isotope with the atomic number 17 but the mass number 35 and 37 so chlorine 1735 is the one and chlorine 1737 is the second so chlorine has a two isotopes with the same atomic number 17 but the different mass 35 and 37 right similarly carbon has a two isotopes with the same atomic number 6 and the mass number 12 and 14 c612 that is the one carbon atom and c614 that is the another carbon atom so carbon has the two isotope with the atomic number 6 but but the mass number 12 and 14 right understand dear student what do you mean by the isotopes isotopes have are the atoms of the same element having the same atomic number but the different mass number atomic number of the elements are same but the mass number is the different right instead of this isobar what do you mean by the isobar isobars are the atom having the same mass number but the different atomic number right so isobars are the atoms having the same mass number atoms of the different elements having the same mass number but different atomic number that means isobars are the atoms of the different element having a same mass number right atomic ma mass number same in the isobar mass number is same but the atomic number is a different we can say that the number of neutron and proton are same right so at isobars are the atom of the different element having a same mass number but the different atomic number for example neon any has the atomic number 10 and sodium has the atomic number 11 but both of them neon and sodium having the mass number same 22 represented by neon 10 22 and sodium na 11 22 right so dear student understand atomic number at isobars 
in the isobar atomic number is a different but the atomic mass are same right now third is give any two use of the isotopes two use of the isotopes one isotope of the uranium uranium has a atomic number 92 atomic mass 235 237 238 39, like this so one isotope of the uranium is used as a fuel in the nuclear reactor so isotope of the uranium 92 237 is used in the fuel in the nuclear reactor in the nuclear power plant so the isotopes of the uranium is used in the nuclear power plant second use one isotope of the cobalt is used in the treatment of the cancer isotope of the cobalt is used in the treatment of the cancer so there are so many use of the isotope of the different elements right so try to find the use of the isotope of the different element in our daily life right so dear student understand all the first eight question of the exercise remaining question answer we will discuss in the next video